How's the air conditioning? They look soft to you? Yeah. Okay. We can do this outside. I'm, I'm, hey, I've been out there for the last, what, two and a half hours. We'll, we'll go to practice if you want. <laughs> if you wouldn't take roll, I'd let you. I won't take the only thing you do is take roll. I mean, see who's missing in flex, and then I get 62 questions about why wouldn't this guy lined up where he usually lines up. I mean, if we were to ask intelligent questions that would be different about practice then would be worthwhile. So I think the number one thing we need to uh, focus on is, um, you know, we, we have to increase the level of attention to detail, um, focus on every play. I mean, so that we, we can play and not have penalties and missed assignments and you know, communication goes with that. I don't care whether you're playing the offensive line, you make a line call, whether you're playing the secondary, you make a coverage call. So everybody's on the same page. And you can anticipate things, and you can play better, and you can play faster. Um, but, and I think sometimes when things get a little bit like difficult, we lose our focus a little bit. And, you know, one of the interesting things somebody brought to my attention, the two longest games that we had last year, almost four hours long, two games, Tennessee and LSU, we made mistakes at the end of the game, which were very costly. And um, so the ability to sustain this level of concentration and focus, no matter what you call it, deeper, focus, whatever, is something that we really, really need to do and continue to work on. Um, so that we have a chance to be, you know, more consistent as a team and don't make plays that are, that are drive killers or give up explosive plays on defense or help the other team with penalties or whatever it is. Um, so, you know, I like the, the, the attitude that the team has. I like the, the togetherness. I like the sort of um, sense of commitment to the principles and values that everybody seems to be buying into. But that's something that we need to work on, and every guy has got to do a good job of, you know, working on that. You know, today was the first day in pads. Obviously, we've gotten chased inside by the rain a couple of days. So this was one of the first days, second day, I guess, we were able to stay outside for the entire practice. And, you know, it's, it's a great opportunity for us to be able to stay focused in these kind of conditions, especially toward the end of practice when guys, you know, are getting tired. And Saturday scrimmage will be no different. You know, we want to evaluate whether guys can block, tackle, execute what they're supposed to do, not so much try to game plan and experiment with things, but just see how guys can play winning football at whatever position. Uh, so, you know, that's something that I think is really, really important. You know, we've had two really good speakers the last two nights. Shep, last night Pete Rose. Um, amazing to me all the accomplishments that Pete Rose was able to, um, like all the records. I mean, I'm, I'm going to tell you, you know, maybe you guys can look them up, but it's fascinating. And he was, in his own admission, he was not the most talented guy, um, but – Charlie Hustle, man. I mean, that guy was something else when it came to competitive spirit and how he went about doing what he did to, you know, play at a high level for so long. Um, and, you know, I think it was good for our players to hear. They really enjoyed it. He had a great sense of humor. So, um, and Shep was all about being a man. So I think some good things happening from that standpoint and helping our guys develop the right habits. Yeah, Coach, just what kind of progress have you seen from Terrence Ferguson at guard? Terrence Ferguson is playing really, really well. You know, he's gotten bigger and stronger. He's also been very, always been very explosive and had explosive power and body quickness. And uh, he's very confident in what he's doing. And, you know, we're playing him at center some too, which he's done a good job of that. He's showing a lot of maturity. Uh, and I, I, I look at him as a starter on our team. Uh, I think we have six or seven guys who may be starters, so we'll see what the best combination is as we go through camp. 
you've mentioned speakers coming in and kind of trying to impart some of their wisdom to this team about their life lessons or their past mistakes. Did Pete Rose talk about his gambling or sexual misconduct allegations with the team? Uh, I don't know how to answer that. But he did call the guy that asked the question in a very funny way a name, a name that I will not repeat. And everybody laughed. But I, I won't call you that name. <laughs> no, he, he said he made a mistake. Uh, he said he made a mistake. Uh, he should have never done it. Um, and he said it was bad judgment on his part. Uh, he was very, you know, much uh, in admitting. Um, but, you know, he also talked about winning. Uh, and he said he never gambled on his team doing anything but winning because he believed in his players, he trusted his players, he loved his players. So that's how he answered the question. So I'm paraphrasing what he said. You ask the question, I'm giving you the answer. But I'm leaving out one part because he had some kind words for the person who asked it. As far as freshmen who in the past have been able to contribute early on, what are some common threads or attributes that, they, that you've seen that they've done to be able to contribute early? I think it's maturity. Uh, I think they're, they're mature, uh, they're confident. Uh, it's interesting you know, how people gain their self-esteem. You know, some people gain their self-esteem from what everybody else thinks. And you know, I think that's pretty shallow and can be um, sometimes um, misleading, but these guys are mature in terms of believing in themselves, having confidence, believing that they can learn, uh, believing that they can go out there and play the techniques that they need to play to be able to have success, and they've had success in the past based on their performance and what they've done, not based on what somebody else said about them. So, uh, and I think that maturity is, you know, the biggest difference uh, in guys that can develop more quickly uh, and in guys that may take a little longer to develop. Good afternoon, Coach. You have a few veterans at kicker and punter. What have you seen from them in the first week, and what do you want to continue to see from them through August? Yeah, they've done really, really well. Um, you know, we've got a lot of confidence in both guys. You know, James has gotten a little better each year in terms of his consistency. He's got a really strong leg, but he's gotten a little more consistent. So his, his, his bad kicks aren't as bad, and his good kicks are even better, but he's more consistent all the way around. And, you know, Will's been as good a college kicker over the last two or three years as anybody could ever ask for. So uh, we're, we're really glad to have both those guys uh, back. I think it's going to be an important part of, you know, you've got to have great special teams. And sometimes people just look at the specialist and they evaluate the special teams. So our specialists should be really, really good. So we got to build really, really good special teams around them so that um, that can be a real asset for us this season. What have been, <clears throat> been your impressions so far of um, Caden Proctor? And just where does that position stand with the health of Elijah and uh, Miles McClain? Well, they're in competition. Uh, I think both guys need to continue to develop and uh, play with a little bit more consistency in terms of uh, the very things that I've been talking about in terms of paying attention to detail, doing the little things right, being able to stay focused when they get tired, having the mental toughness to see it through. And, um, you know, I, I, I really like the, the attitude and maturity of the offensive line and the leadership that we have at the, that position. So those guys are going to be pretty demanding on those guys to buy in and do things at the level they need to be able to play the way they're capable of. Uh, nobody's disappointed in their development, but uh, if they're going to be starters, there's an expectation that goes with that too, and I think that's something that we need to continue to work to get them to be able to do on a consistent basis. Hey Coach, I know Eli Gold is working himself back into shape. He's been rehabbing. Just your thoughts on him returning to the broadcast booth this season? Yeah, I, th I love Eli. You know, he's uh, been with us for a long time. Uh, he's kind of the part of the tradition around here in terms of the expectation of being a voice of you know the Crimson Tide Network uh, in a lot of ways, whether it's radio show or whatever it is, and um, I'm just happy for him and his family that he's getting healthier uh, and he's able to get around and he's going to be able to you know get back and do what he loves doing. So um, we're going to do everything we can to support him and 
even though it may not be 100% full throttle, um, we're sort of working them back into it. But I'm excited to have them back because I love working with them. Coach, at the top, you talked about the importance of communication. How does Seth McLaughlin been looking at center in terms of the checks and calls and the things that the yeah. leadership stuff that goes along with being a good center? Oh, he does. He does really, really well. So does Dalcourt when he's playing center. Um, but I think when you have veteran guys uh, that, you know, certainly can contribute to that guy, which, you know, Book uh, and J.C., uh, and those guys kind of set the tone for that whole group, you know, with Ch uh, Seth. Um, but he's done a really, really good job. He's gotten bigger, he's gotten stronger, and uh, he's always had a tremendous attitude. Um, you know, I don't, I don't think anybody's ever going to go wrong hiring him. I don't care what he ends up doing. I mean, he's, he's got the right stuff. Uh, you've said you've preached to the players just – have that attitude of uh, just a play in, play out sort of emphasis. Do you see a tangible impact on that in practice so far? Uh, if I did and I was satisfied, I wouldn't be preaching. So, you know, I don't think it's anything that you ever give up on. Uh, we'll never give up on it. I think the players want to do it. Uh, I just think, you know, you're changing a mindset. All right, that has been the way guys go about things for a long time. And sometimes guys that are talented, it's more challenging for them to develop the right mindset because they haven't had to do those things all the time. So, um, but I think they realize the importance of it. I think there was a lot of lessons learned from last year as well as uh, every day that we can point out in practice, look, we could have eliminated this area if we had better communication or better focus or better eye control or discipline in eye control or whatever it might be. So. We're going to continue to harp on those things, and you know, hopefully, you know, one day um, everyone will get it. We're going to finish here with Do the skill sets of your options behind center make a two-quarterback system possible, and is that something you'd even consider moving forward? I haven't even thought about it, to be honest with you, and I don't see how those things are related. Okay. So, I, I don't know if. We've had two quarterbacks around here before, but that doesn't mean we had to change the center. Or that one guy went with one center and the other guy went with another center. I was, I, I was just, the options you have at quarterback, does that create an option? Do you have, do the skill sets match, or would they be beneficial for a two quarterback system? Nothing to do with my center. Every center that we have can snap to every quarterback that we have. That's, and it, it, that's not what I'm asking. Uh, I'm asking. The options you have at quarterback, their skill set, does that lend to a two quarterback system? You, would, that, would that be possible and would that be something you can do? You know, we're trying to develop all of our quarterbacks right now, so that's not something that we've talked about to this point. If we think it's going to help us win down the road, then we'll certainly consider it.